Wow, I just came off what felt like the busiest, fullest ship I have ever experienced. I just sailed on the Disney Dream during spring break with the ship at full capacity. I'm Elisa with EECC Travels and let's get into this story about what happened on our most recent cruise. As you can tell, I'm a Disney fan. I love Disney and I went into this knowing pretty much what to expect for a Disney cruise. So this one was a little bit different. Jason didn't come. It was me, our daughter Emily, her daughter Sophia, and Sophia's best friend KK. We sailed on the Disney Dream. We sailed in a veranda cabin. So we had two adults and two little girls in a cabin all together. This is typical of Disney. Um, it is a family cruise line. Most people choose to cruise Disney with their kids, with their family, so the little ones can have that full Disney experience. So when I say the ship was at full capacity, I mean every cabin was full and most were filled at three to four maybe even five to a cabin. This is something that I haven't experienced in a long time. I've had full ships since COVID. Things are back to normal. The ships are mostly sailing at capacity, but I hadn't been on a spring break cruise in a very long time. So why do people cruise on spring break? Well, it makes sense when you have kids. They're out of school. They're not having to miss school to go on vacation. So that's why whenever we were raising our kids who are all grown now, we would choose to cruise on spring break because they were not missing school. Um, so, and we're not the only ones. A lot of people do this. So spring break cruises are going to be busier than a lot of times of the year. I knew that going into it, <laughs> but still was not ready for the feeling of the ship. I even went to guest services and just asked, out of curiosity, how many people are on the ship? And she said, our ship has a capacity of 4,000 and our ship is full. Well, capacity of 4,000 is double occupancy. So you're having more than 4,000 people actually on board. And when I say I cruised with 2,000 kids, that might not be an exact number because I didn't count them, but I figure if you've got 4,000 people on a ship and half of them are kids, you probably got around 2,000 kids on board and we felt it. Now, positives and negatives. Positive, the kids had a lot of other kids to play with. So they had a lot of fun. The kids clubs were full. You know, they had lots of kids their own age to play with. They would get in the pool. They would everywhere. They had other children to play with. That was fantastic. Negative, ships full. I mean, nothing else I can really say about that. We got a little spoiled when cruising first resumed after the big C word to lower capacity ships. And that was really, really nice. So being at full capacity again, we sailed recently at full capacity with another cruise line and it was predominantly adults, very few kids. And then a few weeks later, we sail on this cruise, which was a whole lot of kids. I am not complaining. I don't want anyone to think I'm complaining. I'm just showing the experience that we had. So speaking of kids, we had two kids with us, so I surely can't be complaining about a ship full of kids now, can I? And I'm not. They had a great time. I think that Disney Cruise Line does a wonderful job of bringing kids in, making them feel like it's all about them, making them feel special, and making sure that they have the best experience. And they really, really did. A um, couple of things, let's see. Let's talk about as far as capacity, any issues that we had. The only thing that really became an issue was character meet and greets, okay? So character meet and greets can be long. For instance, at the parks, they can have lines that, you know, snake around and you can have long waits. It felt even like the lines on the Disney cruise were longer to meet the characters than they were at Disney World. And that surprised me. I really 
I don't know why I had it in my head that there were gonna be shorter wait times. But there were some characters that you could meet, you know, rather quickly because, you know, they, they were out a lot. And then there were characters that would only have those one or two meet and greets throughout the cruise and they would have very long lines. And we learned that any character that was at Shutters that's just the location on the ship where they meet, was gonna have a wraparound line. So we did meet Stitch there, we met Ariel there, we met a couple of characters, and we just knew that the line, the characters here, the line starts here and it wraps all the way around where the elevators are to the other side. So we just, we learned it after the first time, we were prepared for it. And you're looking at a 30 to 45 minute wait to meet these characters because there are so many people on board. The good thing is though, because you've got a lot of kids there, they all start talking to each other. They're talking about their experiences. They're talking about what they do back home. And it went by more smoother and quicker than we felt because it wasn't a just like sad, mad people in line for something. You're on a Disney cruise. You're in here to meet characters. You're out of school. So all the kids were happy. So it, that took a somewhat negative experience and put a positive spin onto it. Okay, where else did we really feel the difference? And that was the Lido deck. Oh my gosh. When you see that many people on a ship all trying to swim at the same time, it's like everybody thought, oh, let's go swimming at the same time. And thousands of people were on the pool deck. Needless to say, we chose not to swim during those times because I've been on enough cruises to know, you know, if it's really busy now, let's wait and we'll come back at a less busy time to really enjoy ourselves. But it was just like, it was funny because we boarded the ship early. So when we got on board, it didn't feel busy. And then we felt the crowds come on and come on and come on and come on. And we're like, oh wow, yeah, there's a lot of people on here <laughs> by the time it was sail away. Um, overall, we had a great experience. We had two kids with us. We were really focused on the kids. So we were focused on the kids' activities, meeting characters, and what they wanted to do. We were on a four-day cruise on Disney Dream out of Miami. We went to Nassau and Castaway Key, and then we had one day at sea. We absolutely made the best of this cruise. We asked the girls, what do you want to do? Here's your options. You can do this, this, and this. Do you want to go meet a character? Do you want to go to the kids club? Do you want to go to the pool? and we let them dictate what they wanted to do because we treated this as their vacation. We had fun too, don't get me wrong, and there were decisions that me and Emily made that they just kind of had to go along with, but for the most part, we really embraced the fact that we were taking kids on vacation and we let them make those choices. Okay, overall recap of this cruise. We did sail from Miami. So a lot of times you think, oh, I'm sailing on Disney, I'm sailing out of Port Canaveral. The funny thing is I have sailed twice on Disney Cruise Line now and neither one has been from Port Canaveral. Jason and I sailed the Disney Wonder out of Galveston back in 2018. It'd been a long time since a Disney experience, so that's why I haven't talked about it lately because you know I needed to experience it again. And then this time was out of Miami. So I was not sure how the magic would be compared uh, Miami to Port Canaveral. Because I do know at Port Canaveral, Disney has its own terminal there and it's very special and very magical, but they did a really good job in Miami. So we had the pre-cruise hotel booked through Disney Cruise Line and the transportation. So three buses showed up at our hotel, loaded us all up onto the buses and took us to port. Because we had that arrangement, we were some of the first ones on the ship. So that's a little pro tip that to look into booking your hotel and your transportation through Disney Cruise Line for that little express uh, getting on board. That was really nice. Um, but we felt that they did a really good job with the magic. On the bus there and the bus back to the airport after the cruise, it felt like you were on the Magical Express. So those of you who have been to Disney World before they got rid of the Magical Express, you know what I'm talking about. There's TV screens and they show Disney cartoons, they have Disney trivia, and it just added that little touch of magic. So having that start our adventure off was really good. Plus, everybody's just excited to be on a Disney cruise and they've got the right frame of mind. They've got their ears, they've got their t-shirts. 
and you've got that magic as soon as you get started. If you've never sailed with Disney before, one thing they do that's really, really cool is as each family enters the ship, they ask your name quietly to the side. Then they announce your family and then the crew is there to greet you. No other cruise line does this. I think it's really special, especially for little kids who are seeing this for the first time, especially if they've never been on a cruise. Neither of the girls that were with us had ever stepped foot on a cruise ship before. So we get there, they ask who we are, and they announce, we welcome the Myatt family on board. And so we walk on and just watching their faces light up when they see this beautiful ship for the first time and are introduced to everyone. It was so cool. I just loved, loved their expressions. So that first day on board, it was just getting to know the ship. We walked everywhere around. We went to our room, checked out our room for the first time, put our bags down. Of course, our luggage got delivered later. They got to see where they were gonna sleep and they're like, but we don't have any beds. I said, there's magic. That couch is gonna turn into a bed and then bed will come down from the ceiling. And they're like, oh, really? So when they came back that night and saw it for the first time, they thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, exploring the ship, get on board and just don't go straight to the pool. That's what we told them. They're like, let's get on our swimsuits and go to the pool. I'm like, no, there's so much more of this ship to see. Let's go explore. So we walked and we walked and we checked out the ship. We took them to the kids clubs. We got them introduced to everything. They got their, um, their bands. It's very similar to a magic band. It looks like a magic band, but it's specifically for the Oceaneers Club. So you have to have that band to check in and out. They had that. We got to go explore the kids club for the first time. And on that first day, we as adults could go in with them. We could play with them. We could see everything. That was really cool. So take advantage of that first day to just explore the ship, see where you're going, stay together so you, you can learn how to figure out, okay, well, if I'm here, how do I get to my room and things like that. Had a great first day on board, went to our first dining room, met our wait staff, kind of got settled into everything. We did have early dining, which I loved. That's another little tip for me. If you can get early dining when you have children, that is better. That 8 p.m. dining is difficult for little kids. They just, they're hungry way before eight o'clock. So we had the 5.45, which is early for a lot of people, but it really worked best as opposed to an 8 p.m. dining, having kids with us. So the first day was incredible. We just had a wonderful time exploring the ship, getting comfortable with everything, the sail away party. Disney does an amazing sail away party and you're already excited and to see all those characters, you know, wish you well and sail away from Miami for the first time was just great. So the next day of the cruise, we were in Nassau and surprisingly, we were only one of two ships in port. I'm used to going to Nassau and seeing lots of cruise ships in the port and it was just the two of us. It was uh, the Disney Dream and Holland America's New Staten Dam. So it was so funny. I did make the comment because we, our previous cruise had been with Holland America. I was like, I bet the people in Holland America pulled up next to this Disney cruise and go, oh, okay, there's all the kids. <laughs> And once we got to Blue Lagoon, I could tell who was with Disney and who was with Holland America. Well, number one, Holland gives you a blue tote bag so you could really tell who was with them. But um, I didn't see any kids coming off that ship or very, very few kids. And then all the Disney kids pile off onto the Blue Lagoon boat to, to go over there. But if you've never been to Blue Lagoon, it's a great experience. Um, Blue Lagoon is actually a smaller island off of Nassau. It takes about 20 minutes, 25 minutes to get there by ferry. You have to book the excursion through your cruise line. It's not something you can book on your own, but you can just book a beach day like we did, or they have dolphin encounters and sea lions and all kinds of things that you can do. But we just wanted a beautiful beach day and that's what we got. Our next day was Disney's private island of Castaway Key. And I was so excited because back in 2018, when we were on the Disney Wonder, we did not get to dock in Castaway Key. It was too windy. The captain could not get the ship in and we missed that port. So this was my first experience at Disney's private island. And here is where you could truly see and feel 
all the people because everybody poured off that ship onto the island. And the island is split up into different sections. So you've got the family friendly section, you've got an adult only section, which we did not go to because we did have kids with us. Um, we decided to let the masses off and get off a little bit later. We got off around 10 a.m. And it was difficult to find beach chairs available because ship was at capacity. Everybody was on the beach. We did find chairs, but it, it, it took a minute before we did. But once we got settled, the island is big enough that everyone spreads out. So you, so you don't feel like when you get in the water, there's a lot of people right there around you. There are, but you don't feel congested, if you know what I mean. We had a great day. We posted up next to a platform where the girls could climb up and jump and climb up and jump. And I don't know how they had any energy left by the end of this day because they had so, so much fun there. Great first day experience at Castaway Key and I will definitely want to go back. Castaway Key is unique in the fact that you can also meet Disney characters on island. So it's not just meeting them on the ship. As soon as we got off, there were two meet and greets right there off the ship. We did skip the first one, but we walked a little bit further and Captain Jack Sparrow was there. That's a character that's hard to find at Disney World or a lot of places because Captain Jack Sparrow at Disney World will come out and kind of do like a little show, but getting a personal meet and greet and a signature is difficult. So we went straight for him. He was our first signature of the trip. And we knew it was going to be pirate night that night. That was a cool meet and greet. So we got him, had a great day on board, got back on, got all snazzied up in the little girl's pirate outfits and had a fabulous pirate night on board. If you don't know this, Disney Cruise Line is the only cruise line that can do fireworks at sea. So they have a special Pirates in the Caribbean night on every Caribbean and Bahamas cruise where Throw, they throw a huge pirate party, everything is themed, even your dinner is themed to pirates, and then you end the night with fireworks. Very cool. So ours was just a four-day cruise, so after embarkation day, Nassau, Castaway Key, we only had one day left. We knew this was our last day, it was a sea day, and we're like, okay, let's make the best of this. We picked out some characters that we knew we wanted to meet, we walked around and met those characters. Other than that, we just took it very easy. We went and saw Beauty and the Beast in um, the theater in the afternoon instead of the evening shows. We let the kids go play in the kids club and me and Emily just wandered and were adults for a little bit. And then we chose that night to not go to the main dining room. And this is a big tip of mine, is take one night, skip that rotational dining, don't do it on an animator's palette night. But take a night, skip it, put on your swimsuits, go to the pool, eat the burgers, eat the pizza for dinner, and enjoy a pool with very few people in it. So this is what we truly learned, that our best take of a busy, busy, busy spring break cruise is you've got to find places and times where you can have the ship to enjoy it on your own. And this night is was for us. We had maybe 100 people up on the pool deck, very little compared to, you know, 4,000 people. So we had the pool, we had the slides, we had the aqueduct just about to ourselves. And the aqueduct, if for those of you who don't know, is not just a water slide, it is a water roller coaster, okay? You go up, you go down, the water's pushing you from behind, and you go all the way around the pool deck. It's unique, it's fun, and the girls wanted to do it over and over and over again. During that same day, during the day, there was a 45 minute wait for this slot. At night, it was a walk on. So this night was one of our best nights. We chilled, we swam, we did the water slide, we ate burgers, and we watched movies. They show movies all day long, all night long, on the Funnel Vision by the pool. So we ended the cruise on a great note. No, we didn't get to meet every character we wanted, but we met quite a few. No, we didn't get to do every single thing we wanted on board, but we had a great time in the four days that we had. We did not let the big crowds bother us, and we truly enjoyed our Disney cruise. Let me know down in the comments, have you ever been on a Disney cruise? Did you think you had too many people on board or was it just right? 
I want to hear what your reaction is to this. Um, if you're new to our channel, be sure and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And until next time, happy cruising. Bye.